Welcome back, and we are here with Rob Feeney, who has just poured wine. <laughs> yes, and of course. What, what time is it? It's 20 past 8 in the morning. Well, hey. Good you know, morning, it's, everybody. It's noon <laughs> somewhere. But, no, it's not noon. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> now, this is, uh, we're excited. That's, a, that's actually a wine that we did with Haywire up in the Okanagan, and it's called Feeney Goes Haywire. And we actually, Feeney Goes Haywire. Yeah. How appropriate. <laughs> so it's, uh, this is my little wine, so I thought, why not bring it and nice. have you guys enjoy that. So. Great. Now, you are here because next weekend is Eat Vancouver, which yeah. is a very fun weekend. Yes. You can just eat and drink your way through yeah. BC Place over and over again. Pretty much. <laughs> just don't get stuck in that beer tent too long. Ah, uh, right. Because yeah. you, you should eat too. Yes. Yeah. No. It's good. It's been. It's the tenth anniversary of, of Eat now. So, and I've been fortunate enough to be there from day one. And it's, uh, it's really a great event because it, it keeps growing every year. They've got. They've. All, they also have one out in Abbotsford uh, that happens in the fall. So, it's. Uh, it's just grown and grown and grown. What's great about it is it is that you know you look at the different people that are there and it's not just the chefs that do the demos, but. It's really, you know, it's funny because I remember uh, the last couple years because it's at the convention center. It just gets, it just like it's, it's wall to wall people. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's fun. I mean, Vancouver is a great food city, and I think this gives a lot of the local purveyors a chance to to showcase their to product. Show off, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, are you going to be making this? Next yeah, week? I'm gonna. I've got a couple. I mean, I'm on. Uh, I'm on Friday night at six fifteen. Then I'm one fifteen and five fifteen on on Saturday. Or sorry, four fifteen on Saturday, and uh, I'm doing a couple things. And uh, get out of there. Um, <laughs> we're. Uh, we're gonna do, this is a little bit of a pulled pork, so this is a okay. bao mei kind of sandwich I'm gonna make, and then one of the other demos, I'm doing a lobster uh, mac and cheese. Ooh, so, lobster mac and cheese, yeah. so oh there's, my gosh. There's, What's the trick okay. to good pulled pork? My, my, my buddy's dad makes a tremendous one, but there's other times where I can make one and it's like leather. Well, you know what, I, it's, it, the funny thing is, is that you know, when you, it's like anything when you eat out, it's all about the equipment you have. So okay. if you look at the very, very high end of a, a pulled, you know, a, a really good pulled pork, this is a pork butt, you really need, traditionally you need, a, you know, you need a, Having it in, the, in a brine, like a salt, sugar, water brine for 24 hours really helps because it softens things up. And that's what we've done with this. But you have a smoker, uh, technically mm -hmm. speaking, right, mm -hmm. where you do it again sort of low and slow for you know, anywhere from 16 to 18 hours. That's really at the end of the day, that's the ultimate. So if you're able to have, and I have a few friends that have smokers in their backyard, perfect. But if you don't, again, you start with the brine, which is you know, a salt, sugar, water brine put it in the brine for 24 hours, and then again, it's kind of low and slow. So what you want to do is have some of that liquid. You can make a nice little rub for yourself, put it on, put the rub in, mm -hmm. and then in the oven, cover it, and just basically slow for a long period of time. So, I mean, this could be sitting in, this could be in a, like a 250-degree oven or 300-degree oven for anywhere from six to seven hours. Yeah, and, the, and the slower you do it, the better you get, because essentially what you want to do, and I mean, yeah, when let's, they talk about... Yeah, let's get cooking. Why don't we, when why they, we talk When they about talk about pulled pork, it's like, you know, this this will just pull apart, right? And, it, and it's all about the fat on it. And this is essentially when you, you know, this is what we've done with some of the meat ahead of time. And like, again, it's really, and when you taste the meat, because you have a chance to taste it, I know you don't eat meat, so I'll do something different for you. <laughs> Thank you. Is that essentially you want to have uh, Jay can't wait, apparently, for yeah. the sandwich. <laughs> and you need a, and it, it, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a low, and slow process, right? right? And look how that so it's apart. not. So it's not like I said. It's it's never the ultimate in terms of when you're making it, uh, making it home if you don't have a smoker. But the best thing you can do is get it in the brine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it. What I'm going to make making is bao mei. So I'm going to make one quickly for you mm -hmm. without any meat, so I don't touch any meat. Okay. So okay. bao mei. So we've got a little bit of um, sort of typical combinations in in terms of uh, this type of Vietnamese sandwich. Is mm -hmm. you have a little bit of uh, Thai basil mint, and then we're going to put a little bit of uh, cilantro in here as well, mm -hmm. mm. right? And what we're going to do is get a little bit of this slaw for you, right? Which is just a little bit of uh, this is uh, unripened papaya, oh, and really? a little bit of carrot, and daikon. And this is a typical sort of uh, Southeast Asian sauce. You got a little bit of fish sauce, lime juice, and sugar. That's all this is, right? Uh, You're going to mix a, this that's in. That's a fresh little. Sandwich. So again, I don't want to, don't want to go too crazy in here. But this is this is I know this is it's a very simple sandwich, mm -hmm. but it's very fresh. So this is a, and the bun that I have is basically, this is a very sweet bun. It's almost like a brioche style bun. Okay. So that's yours. That's it for my, without, thank you. That's yours without any I'll meat. I wish you get yours. And again. now, Jay, we're going to go with you and we're going to make this a little, I'm just going to go like this, put the same kind of ingredients in. I can never have enough cilantro. There, there's just something about cilantro. You know, the last oh. couple of years, is, it, it's come on in my world a little oh, really? bit. Really? Okay. I really, I think cilantro is you either love it yeah. Yeah. Or, you, or you hate it. Yes. There's, things, really, sure. there's really no in betweens. So here, we're just going to, again, this is these type of sandwiches that you don't really find on the streets. And it could be either Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously mm -hmm. uh, in, in Thailand. And, and, or in, and even in Vietnam. And you take a little bit, of, a little bit more sauce. And essentially, it's about, it's about a fresh tasting salad. So we're just going to do this. I'm going to put this on the top for you. And I know you like cilantro, so we'll leave it like that. I'll even Perfect. put a little bit more of the sauce. Ooh. 
Wow. Okay. Now this is like That's the perfect a, summertime food. It is. It is in the yes. sense that if you think about when Cheers, you make Jake. this, if you think about <laughs> when you make this, um, it really doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, you know, mint you can get, mm -hmm. Thai basil. If you can't find Thai basil, mm. basil will substitute, right? And cilantro, and then here and here, there's some pickled cucumbers here pickled, for you too. So I got to open my sandwich. That's okay. Mm -hmm. There, I put those mm -hmm. too. I forgot those on yours. That's okay. We'll just have to make another one, Rob. <laughs> I That's will. Delicious. I'm going to make some for everyone. So I'm, that I'm was just so gonna, simple. It is simple. Yeah. It's simple. It's tasty. It's not. And again, fish mm -hmm. sauce you can find. The great thing I love about uh, this country and having you know having traveled across Canada is that you look at the amount of products that are available for mm -hmm. people. And I mean, I look at Superstore is one of those places that everything that we see in front of you know you know the mint, mm -hmm. even Thai basil is available on a, on a regular basis. But you can get fish sauce. Lime juice, sugar, obviously. Right, it's so much easier to find these ingredients yeah, you're now not, than you it know, used to be. I mean, the unripened papaya, okay, a little bit more difficult, but then, you know, daikon you'll be able to find, which yeah. is in there, and the carrot, right? So it's really, it's, it's really about just trying to, you know, take a look around. And, and like I said, this is something that's fun. And the reason why I picked this for Eat Vancouver is I usually give samples out, so be able to, so people that come out will be able to have a chance to taste this. You can walk with it. <laughs> you can walk with it. Yeah. Rob, when you talk about, you know, like this being a simple, simple food, it seems like a simple food also just has a fl as much flavor as some of those special dishes that you guys have created over the years. Do you find that as well when you're creating stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, this is part of what I'm, you know, part of my process or part of the, part, part of the job with the a, a, a Cactus Club and, and what we do and what mm -hmm. we offer is it's all about affordable luxury and making sure we can give people you know things that are things that are accessible and yeah. things that aren't over the top. And uh, as a matter of fact, you know, just we looking at you know looking at English Bay, uh, 